Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. It's been just over a month since AMD announced RDNA 3, and right now it's time to talk about what exactly that means to you. Today we're taking a look at AMD's brand new extremely potent Radeon RX 7900 XEX. It's time for a shakedown, and spoiler alert, it's time for a shake up. Let's get it. Let's make this easy for you guys to understand. The AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX is built on the new AMD RDNA 3 architecture and is the first GPU ever to use a chiplet design. The 7900 XTX features 24 gigs of GDDR6 memory and in terms of power delivery and consumption, it does not require any type of exotic power connectors. It uses just two 8-pin PCIe power cables. This will probably be different for some of the partner cards, but this is what the card that we've got here is like. The Radeon RX 7900 XTX will consume around 355 watts at full tilt, but I'll talk more about power consumption a little bit later. As far as testing the card, we retested a bunch of other graphics cards that we've already tested on our i9-12900K test bench, and we actually set up a second Ryzen 9 7950X test bench as well for a little bit of comparison. Now, we use testing that is repeatable and standardized and not gameplay testing because those results can't be repeated and have way too many variables and are ultimately very unreliable. We want the only variable in our testing to be the GPU, not a section of gameplay in a certain map. The results for these tests also always vary from outlet to outlet because almost everyone has a different testing methodology. But let's kick it off with some 1080p benchmarks. We're actually changing the way that we're doing these videos to structure them a bit differently to make it easier for you guys. As I mentioned before, at lower resolutions, we're seeing this become a lot more CPU bound and at 1080p, there's no surprises here for me personally. This shouldn't surprise you either, given that these GPUs at 1080p have been CPU bound for many years. However, being CPU bound does not show the 7900 XTX is being much more powerful than any of the other GPUs that we've tested here. We see this in Shadow of the Tomb Raider in both Windows and Linux, with it only being a single frame behind the 4090 at 1080p on our regular test bench, and equaling the performance of a 4090 with the 7950X test bench that we set up for this video. The results here that you're seeing for all of the 7950X testing is with smart access memory available and enabled as well. With superposition, we saw the 7900XX equal the performance of the RTX 4080, which I honestly wasn't too surprised with considering AMD kind of marketed the 7900XX as trading blows with the 4080 anyway. In Linux, we see that this is also the case with the 7900XX outpacing the 4080. With the 7950X testing, we also see the same thing again with the 7900XX beating the 4080 by about two frames per second. In Cyberpunk 2077, we retested everything since they upgraded to FSR 2.1 since our initial testing was using FSR 1.0. We also used FSR on all the cards since it's supported on everything. And we didn't use ray tracing here because we wanted to even the playing field. But if I was to comment on that, we're seeing the ray tracing performance be around where the 3090 Ti would fall with the 7900 XTX. The other thing I wanted to mention is we saw what we saw with FSL1 being that AMD GPUs either equal or outpace NVIDIA's offerings and the 7900 XTX easily outpaces the rest of the field with the 12900K test bench. We had a lot of problems with Linux testing, so we actually skipped Cyberpunk on Linux this time. We will come back to this. However, with the 7950X test bench, we saw a faster score, but the 4080 and 4090 outpaced the 7900XTX by a few frames here. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see that the 7900XTX being the fastest out of the whole field with AMD GPUs usually leading the pack at 1080p. We've seen this as a bit of a pattern and that's just how it is with Horizon. You can also check out some of our other videos where this is the case too, just for a little bit of clarification. Remember, we are CPU bound at 1080p. And in Linux, this is really apparent with almost all GPUs testing being very close to performance. And with the 7950X, we're seeing more of the same with the 7900XX coming out on top again. Overall, at 1080p, the performance is pretty decent with the 7900XTX. 
But let's move on to 1440p benchmarks, and we ran the same tests all over again. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p in Windows, we see that the 7900 XTX is equaling the performance of the 4080 on the 12900K test bench. You can already see this is a little bit of a pattern that is starting to form here. In Linux though, the 4080 is the faster card with the RTX 4090 just doing RTX 4090 things, right? With the 7950X test bench, we see what we saw with the 12900K system. The 7900 XTX and 4080s are exactly equal in performance. With superposition at 1440p, we run this one with no depth of field and no motion blur. We saw the 7900 XTX trailing quite far behind the RTX 4080. This is pretty typical at 1440p, however, in Linux, the 7900 XTX beats out the rest of the field quite easily. With the 7950X test bench, we see the same thing that we saw with the 7900XTX again trailing behind the RTX 4080 on the 12900K test bench. In Cyberpunk 2077, we see that we're still quite CPU bound at 1440p, and the 7900XTX only slightly trails behind the RTX 4090. And with the 7950X test bench, we see a lower overall performance score. However, we do see that both the RTX 4080 and 4090 outpace the 7900XTX. Lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p. We're still quite CPU bound here in Horizon, and we see the 7900XTX outpacing both the RTX 4080 and 4090 by a few frames per second. This benchmark always seems to favor AMD GPUs and Intel CPUs as that combo. We're also seeing that being echoed in Linux with the 7900XTX easily beating the 4080 and 4090. The real surprise here is that the 7950X, we see the complete opposite with the RTX 4080 and 4090 outpacing the 7900XTX quite easily. Okay, finally onto some benchmarks that you guys will be most interested in the 4K benchmarks, and we ran all the same tests all over again. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K in Windows, we can see that the 7900XTX is quite close to the performance of the RTX 4080 on the 12900K test bench. In Linux though, the 7900XTX is considerably slower than the RTX 4080, and with the 7950X test bench, we see that the 7900XTX and the RTX 4080 are trading blows again with both having the same performance. With superposition at 4K with the 7900XTX, once again, it equals the performance of the RTX 4080. In Linux, we see the 7900XTX beat the RTX 4080 by approximately three frames per second. And with the 7950X test system, we see the same pattern with the 7900XTX beating the RTX 4080 by three frames per second. Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K, we see that the 7900XTX trails behind the RTX 4080 by a small amount, with the difference being within a margin of error by about one frame per second, and that, that's pretty close. With the 7950X test bench though, we actually lost a bit of performance on the 7900XTX here. Lastly, onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K in Windows, we see the 7900XTX trail behind the RTX 4080 by a single frame again, this is within a margin of error and ultimately you would get the same gaming experience here. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing the 7900XTX easily beating both the RTX 4080 and 4090. And lastly, with the 7950X test bench, we see the 7900XTX trail behind the RTX 4080 by a single frame again. We also ran our one hour stress test in Ida64 for thermal testing, and we couldn't get the AMD Radeon RX 7900XTX above 62 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We also recorded the memory temperature and it got quite toasty, but it didn't go above 92 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Be aware though, as per usual, we run all these tests on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system will be far different from what we observe here in this video. We include this result because our open air testing environment is consistent with everything that we've tested across the board. As far as power consumption, we observed the 7900XTX hitting a board power draw maxing out at around 347 watts at full load over the period of one hour. The board power here is actually rated at 355 watts, so seeing it at 347 watts over our testing period is about right on the money. 
We also observed the 7900 XTX to be audible over our testing period with little to no call whine. Again, open air test system, you're gonna hear everything in a closed system. I don't think you're gonna hear this particular card at all. Now, acoustic observations make more sense for normal users and normal use cases, since most of the numbers don't make sense to a regular person who is trying to use a card like this. Acoustics are only really tangible if the card is sitting next to you. So what are my thoughts on the AMD Radeon RX 7900XX? How can I say this? Nvidia is in a lot of trouble. The 7900XX is the first card in a long time from AMD that I can honestly see replacing my Nvidia GPU in my own gaming PC. But that's not saying it's the perfect GPU because AMD said some things and they delivered some other things but allow me to explain. Here's something the benchmarking didn't show that is actually a really valid metric. It's more of a measurable life metric. Let's call it the playtime to not caring about what GPU you're using metric. The way this metric works is how long it takes for you to not remember what GPU you put in your system when you're playing for an extended period of time. How does this metric work? Well, I installed the 7900XTX in my own gaming PC and started playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare on it with the same settings I was running on my RTX 4080, other than obviously using FSI instead of DLSS, of course. Not only did I not notice the difference in performance and visual fidelity, I forgot I was using the 7900XTX altogether and amassed around 15 hours of playtime without realizing that the 7900XTX was still in the PC. When you don't have to think about settings or overclocks or stability and just play a game, that's when a GPU is decent. Now this is the first time in many years I can honestly say that this is the experience that I had with an AMD GPU. No thinking about stability, no thinking about drivers, not worrying about settings. I just plugged the 7900XTX in, installed the drivers, and unknowingly dumped 15 hours of playtime into a game over a few days. And that's why I think Nvidia is in a lot of trouble because not only did I not notice the difference in experience at all, I had the same gaming experience. But here's the kicker. The 7900XTX is a cheaper card than the 4080, which delivers the same gaming experience. Well, at least for the games that I actually play and for the 7900XTX that I actually have here. But this is where this can be thrown all out of whack. If AMD partner cards for the 7900XTX are too expensive, it actually makes the RTX 4080 a more attractive card. If the board partners keep the price down, they can actually price Nvidia right out of the market. If Nvidia drops the price of the 4080 to be in line or to be cheaper than 7900XTX, everybody still loses. Because for AMD to have truly won with the 7900XTX, they needed to offer it at the price that they already have it for or a little bit less, but deliver more than 10% more performance than the RTX 4080. On the flip side of that, AMD is known to make a lot of improvements over time with performance with drivers and tuning. It's just about whether or not you wanna get in at the ground floor with the performance it has now and pray that it gets better over time, which has no guarantee. But if you had to ask me which one I would choose between the RTX 4080 and the 7900XTX right now, I think the choice is kind of easy, basically because of the price. I would still choose the 7900XTX. Not only does it deliver similar performance, it's also a physically smaller card than almost all of the 40 series offerings, actually all of them basically. It doesn't use a 16 pin PCIe power connector. It's a lot more future proof with DisplayPort 2.1 and it does what you want it to do. Play games and play them for less money right now, right? Now performance wise, at 4K at least, it's pretty impressive. And that's what this card's designed to do, to play 4K titles and play them well. From my own experience with using this card quite a lot at 4K, it delivers for me and I think it will deliver for you too, but it should have delivered more. This was never going to be a 4090 competitor, but it should have been more of a 4080 competitor. With saying all that though, as much as the 7900XX could have been better, I have to say, if I'm being absolutely honest here, I've not been this excited about gaming in a long time and it finally feels like competition is back and AMD is taking the fight back to Nvidia. Let's hope AMD can improve the performance and tuning over time though, because if they were to give this about 10% more performance with drivers and tuning, 
It's an absolute no-brainer at that price point and performance. So if you're interested in the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX, it's going for around 999 US dollars at the time of filming. We're not sure about the Australian pricing right now since we don't usually get the reference cards here, but if I had to guess, I would say that the partner cards would start at around $1,500 and upwards. At the end of the day, all we're doing is giving you the numbers that we found with this testing. It's up to you whether or not you make the decision on if this is something that you're interested in and if this GPU is worth your hard earned money, I can't make you do anything. But if I can make you do something, it would be to like this video and subscribe. And if you didn't like the video, you can hit the dislike button, but you know, it doesn't really work anymore. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And just on a bit of an ending note here, if AMD was just a little bit faster, it would have made this a lot more attractive. For a lot of people, I can see that they're gonna say that this card is a little bit disappointing, but again, on the flip side of that, give them time with the drivers. AMD usually does better, but again, there's no guarantees here. If anything, if they really wanted to win, if the price was $899 with the performance of the 4080, then it'd be an absolute no-brainer. AMD's pulled stuff like this before, so let's see what happens. Thanks for watching.